the disaster artist. Disaster artist. I what a disaster. I was kind of surprised at how little I like this. Really? Yeah. I uh, I no. I only watched the room because I read the book, The Disaster Artist, and I was excited about the movie coming out. Yeah. And then I watched the movie, and it's good, but I was expecting something very different. What were you expecting? I thought it was going to be much more of a comedy. Um. I mean, it's as funny as it can be when you're talking about a very sad man's life. Yeah, and that, that I was just kind of depressed watching this movie. Uh, it it had its moments, so. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Uh, and I mean, it was mainly the first, I don't know, three quarters, but then the last, the last bit of it is pretty depressing. <laughs> the James Franco, I thought, did a great job, and uh, oh man, Dave Franco did a really good job too. Um. Yeah, I thought so. But uh, what what really killed it for me, I mean, this is kind of jumping to the end of the movie, was in the theater when everyone watching the movie started laughing. Yeah. That was the worst acting out of The Disaster Artist and The Room. Oh, you thought so? <laughs> it was terrible. People were like, ha, 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 ha. Like, I think just... some people just find it hard to fake, like exorbitant laughter yeah it was like you can fake a laugh but can you fake like like as if you're watching the funniest thing you've ever seen no I, exactly it's not easy <laughs> um but people I do it daily people people were one i don't think that's what actually happened right not in real life i think it took a long time for the room to start gaining steam on being funny I think people were just yeah. uncomfortable for a long time, and then they started. Oh, I'm sure liking it and you know getting excited about it. But uh, I think it took a long time for that to happen. I don't think anyone. I don't know if anyone at that first premiere was like really into the movie, like cracking up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So the the disaster artist. The story is this is about Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero who were friends. They met in acting class. Tommy Wiseau is this rich guy from the, where is he from? Uh, middle, no, Eastern he European. He says That's he's from New Orleans. I almost, said, I almost said Middle Earth. <laughs> he could be for all we know. Sometimes I say things and I'm like, I am the dumbest person alive. That like, where does he is an elf. He kind of looks like an elf. He does. Um, um, yeah, he claims to be from New Orleans. Yes, but definitely not. Hmm. Not originally. I don't, maybe like a different planet, New Orleans. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> that dude's wacky. He's so weird. Yeah. How I mean, old do you think he legit is? Like now? at least in the room. In the, in room? the room. He's probably late thirties, early forties. Uh, he's got to be like 42 by then maybe 42 i that's my guess yeah at least 42 yeah probably i mean and that was that was almost 20 years ago no. he's got to be pushing 60 i think yeah it was 2006 six no 2001? i don't think so i think it's 2001 when it actually premiered but they filmed it like two years before that mm. okay. well almost 20 years ago yeah, so he's yeah, in so his sixties now. He's got he's got to be sixty at least, yeah. I would imagine. But so he he ends up making his own movie. He writes and produces and directs his own movie. Ends up spending six million of his own dollars to do all this stuff, and he has no idea what he's doing. And it's just a no. giant train wreck, and he just makes everyone crazy. And uh, the movie is awful. People consider it to be one of the worst movies ever made, and yet people love it. Because it's it's just so weird and just But here's the thing insane. it's it's bad uh -huh. but it's 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 like funny bad. Yeah. So it's it's got an enjoyable factor to it. There's a lot of movies that are a lot worse that don't even have that. Yeah. Well <clears throat> I think we had talked about it when we talked about the actual room. Um Right. But part of it is he actually cared about what he was making. And yeah, so he has no self awareness. No. 
And so, or no awareness in general. His passion for the project comes through. And so the earnestness, earnestness, earnest, earnesty, earnestness, er, er, earnesty, the just how pa- Ernest Borgnine, <laughs> just all of that shines through. And so you can, even though it's bad, you still see the heart, the passion, the love for this project comes through. So it's more endearing, even though it's terrible, uh, yeah. where other things are just bad, you know, like, yep. and uh, like bad, low effort. This was high effort, low skill. Yep. Very high effort. And uh, it's uh, the movie room or the room. <laughs> That's going to be, I'm going to keep tripping. Not over. to be confused. Um, yeah. The room is really bad. I actually, I don't really find it that funny. Uh, I didn't really. Oh, I've seen it like three times and I think I like it more and more each time really? I watch it. I, I can see going to a, like a show, like a, a showing of it with a bunch yeah. of other people. That sounds fun. But to like watch it by myself again, I'm no interest. Huh. I, I, I enjoy it just because, yeah, well, just because it's so bad. But I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen it since watching The Disaster Artist. I wonder if that makes it better or worse or doesn't matter. I think so <clears throat> when I read the book or when I listened to the book, uh, everything seemed kind of goofy, right? Uh, Tommy Wiseau's yeah. character just seemed real ex- eccentric and just like, yeah, this is weird, but we're all having fun. When I watch The Room, it's like, how was this made? This is insane. But when I watched The Disaster Artist, I was like, oh, man, this is just sad. I just felt bad for so, Tommy Wiseau. Is it pretty similar to the book? No, not like I mean, not really. Do they get it right? No, there's there's not there's really not that much of them making the movie in the Disaster Artist. Right. Um. And uh, I'm trying to think, because they don't start making the movie until about halfway through, right? Yeah. And all the stuff that leads up to them making the movie. I don't really feel like they they did it true to the book. Okay. And it's not bad. It's not like it's crazy out there. They just, they cut out certain plots and like things that why he would do this or do that. Um, Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to remember it. It, The the book goes into way more detail and they kind of had a cut. They they cut a lot of stuff out. uh, not, Not necessarily because they couldn't do that but because they would have to spend more time explaining something that wasn't important yeah you know and so that makes sense so it's not it's not really that close to the book but it's also not like that far off either right um do you do you like anything about this movie oh yeah no i think the acting is great i think it's really uh the the way they filmed it i think they did a really good job i like yeah, you know, the story's funny. I just it's just uh I was in the mood for like a comedy. I was in the mood for like to laugh and have a good time. Not mm-hmm. not feel sad. <laughs> um yeah, no, I feel you. I felt like they did a really good job of of doing the room scenes. Uh-huh. Oh, what? You know, at like like pretty much spot on to the movie. Well, did they just uh, shoot the entire movie? I I think that they did a good chunk. I would love to see a full movie of them just remaking it, like shot for shot. Because here's the thing, right? There's there's only five set pieces on the room. Right. So there's the room. The, <laughs> yeah. There's the there's the, the roof. There's the the rooftop, the living room, right. the bedroom, uh, outside the house. And then San Francisco, yeah. which is a couple. Oh, in the alleyway. Yeah. So, like, you know, you have less than 10, 10 sets you need to make, and they made all of them. And I don't, I feel like they could have easily just filmed the entire movie. Like, do you want? They, they might have, and then just like kind of kept like what they felt was the best. Well, I, that, I would have to imagine if they filmed the entire movie that there's a cut of their 
of their their version. Yeah. Would you watch that? <sighs> yeah, I think so. I would for sure. I would absolutely. I would watch it because I'd be curious. I wouldn't watch it for like fun or like uh like I wouldn't be excited. Like oh, I can't wait to see this. It would just be like oh, I wonder. I wonder how they did. And uh, I mean, they show all the clips at the yeah. end of the shot by uh, side by side of it all. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they they nailed it. Like it's exactly oh, yeah, they didn't what the mm. room was. Um, I really liked Zac Efron's yeah, portrayal I was, of Chris R. That well, so when that happened, I was so excited. I was like, "Oh, this movie is going to be great!" Like watching Zac Efron get all pumped up and like I, that's <laughs> what I was expecting this movie to be like. That that yeah, over the top like that. And uh, I well, because Chris R. really did go crazy like that. He did even t- <laughs> he's going crazy, and Tom's like, "This guy's a monster." <laughs> <laughs> um i did not enjoy the kid from the hunger games in this though oh uh josh huntington huffington huntington Huff- H- 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 hutchinson that guy hutchinson hutchinson yes yeah i thought he did good is denny because denny's a freaking weird little character yeah he just I don't know. Something about his hair and his face just seems so unnatural to me. Yeah, but wasn't that intentional? No, well, because like Denny, the kid who played Denny originally, didn't seem that weird. He didn't look that un- uncomfortable to look at. He wasn't that uncomfortable to look oh, at. Oh, I don't know about that. He was very strange for me. His like, character was from weird. Start to finish, he looked like a little weirdo. But he, I, I felt like they, they nailed it. Even at the end, when they're in the movie theater, he still had that same haircut, which seemed strange. Uh, yeah, he got lost in the character. <laughs> you know, he couldn't get out. I remember uh, back in high school when you had long, flowing hair. Oh, it was glorious! Yes, what of happened? Of course, who could forget? Are you ever gonna grow that back out? No. Why not? No, no, no. Too hot. <laughs> too much maintenance, and <laughs> that part of me died. <laughs> the happiness side of you. Yeah. All the joy went out. Yeah, I hated I hated hanging out with you at that time because anytime we left oh, somewhere, so, you would have to straighten your hair. Yeah, it it was a, it was a phase. All right, we, we don't got to get into it. <laughs> uh, what did you like about the Disaster Artist? Um, I liked I liked pretty much all of James Franco. I thought he did a good job. I like I said, Dave Franco was great. Just kind of. Being the guy who went along with it, mm-hmm. just I, I don't really know why he went along with it, but he did. Uh, I guess he was insecure, maybe. Okay. Um. But, so no judgment, but they were oh boy. in a relationship, right? Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sister. Yeah. Or or James I don't th- and I don't, Dave Franco. I don't think James and Dave were in a relationship. Tommy and uh, Greg. Uh, you mean like in real life? Yeah. Or like during this movie? Yes. I don't know. I think that's... I don't know if that's necessarily what they want you to believe, but I, I think they want you to to have those questions because it's, it's just a weird relationship. Yeah. Um, well, I just mean in real life. Like... Maybe I don't know. I, I it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Either way, uh, it's <laughs> weird. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't mean to make you so uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yes, this is quite uncomfortable. <laughs> no, what I think my favorite part is it's about the middle of the movie. They've moved to Los Angeles and they're auditioning for roles. Yeah. And Tommy goes in for some role <laughs> that he's reading, and the lady's like, "Are you doing like an accent?" Yeah. And he's like, "No." She's like, "Okay, well, can you try it again, but with like less of an accent?" And he tries to do whatever he thinks she's talking about, and it's just really weird to hear him talk. I thought that was really funny because yeah. he he was trying to please her, even though he had he doesn't think that he has an accent, so he's like, "I I don't know what she means, but I'm gonna try to do it anyways." <laughs> Do you think he really doesn't think he has an accent, or do you think he's just trying to convince people that he doesn't have an accent? 
I think he, well, maybe, maybe both. Maybe it's been so long that he doesn't believe it anymore. He believes that now. Yeah. I, 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 honestly, I don't, I don't know what he knows about himself. It's so hard because he's so strange. Well, like for me, right, I, I'll speak Thai and I'll speak Burmese. And uh, to me, it sounds exactly the same, what they're saying versus what I'm saying. And sometimes I will be so far off and people will start laughing at me. <laughs> I remember one time I was with my Thai teacher and I tried to say the ocean, which... Uh-huh. You would think, or like, I, I didn't know the word for it, so I was trying to say it in Thai in a way that made sense. So I said "big water," which I said "nam yai," uh, which is "big breasts." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, classic. He just he he turned so red and just started cracking up laughing. <laughs> um, nice. But no. So the point is. Maybe he doesn't think he has an accent because it's hard to tell if it's not your first language. But do you think it? Do you think he has another language outside of English? Yeah, that's where his accent's from. But he just maybe he just talks weird. No, that's definitely that's that's an accent from it being your second language. That's why people think he's yeah, Eastern know. European. Oh, I'm sure he is. Oh. From like uh, Czechoslovakia or something. Yeah, I don't know where, but I I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> he uh, he's just he's whack. I really but I really enjoyed the when they were doing casting. I thought that was pretty funny. When uh, <laughs> it's like, don't, oh, now like you're riding a horse, <laughs> no, but you're answering the door. Yeah, someone keep riding the horse, but someone's at the door. <laughs> it's like who is it? <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> he's, he's saying something like like you're a cowboy like you're a cowboy and she's like you don't, want me to be a cowboy yeah he's like don't do it like cowboy and uh she's like you want me to do it like a cowboy <laughs> he's like no he's he's saying you're doing it like a cowboy it's like okay I, i'm really she's like do you wait am i still doing it like a cowboy like i don't get it yeah. but yeah it's <clears throat> Why do you think he's so mysterious? Do you think he's like hiding something? Or is he's just weird? Like, why don't you think he wants people to know his age or where he's from or where his money's from? Well, it's got to be like witness protection, right? N- no, I don't think that. I think. It, no, it absolutely is not. <laughs> well, then he's really bad at it. I don't think you get to be in movies if you're in witness protection. He's doing pretty well. Um,. You uh, so in the book they tell a story. So Greg Sestero wrote the book, and he tells a story about it's like this hypothetical person from I can't remember which country it was. Uh, got beat up and ran away, and came to America and sold things on the dock and did really well and kept growing and growing his little tiny business until he bought a, a warehouse and started selling clothes and it like became rich off of that. Which, <clears throat> I mean, is is supposed to be just his his story, but I, I think it was because he he ran away from home and uh, wants to be an American because that's where he had his opportunity. He doesn't want people to yeah. think less of him for being an immigrant. Hmm. Do you think Greg Sestero knows all the truth about him? Uh, probably. Don't you? I like I said I. I would imagine if anyone did, it would be him. But at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me if to this day he still doesn't know anything about no. him. They uh, they got another movie coming out. I think maybe it already came out. Best Friends. I, and uh, Yeah, you showed me the trailer for it a little while back. It's I guess it's a two-parter. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so The Disaster Artist, it is... I think... I think if I knew what I was getting into, what I was about to watch, yeah. I would have enjoyed it more. Um, yeah. It. And I go back and forth about it. It's 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 really good. They did a great job making it, but it's, I was just not emotionally ready to feel so sad for this character. I thought I was just going to laugh at. 
Now, imagine if they did another movie that was the documentary of that other guy who was filming behind the scenes <laughs> in like a Jim and Andy style, but with Dave or with James Franco, it's James and Tommy. I probably could. I mean, I saw uh, James Franco on a couple of interviews after this came out and he was still, uh-huh. he still had that accent. Like he, oh yeah, that's from what I've read is once once they started, he was Tommy until they finished filming. But like he, I like thought <clears> the whole time. But even after they finished filming, he was in interviews talking normally, but the accent would slip in. Yeah, that's <clears throat> it's like forgetting how to laugh. <laughs> exactly. Um. Um. One other scene that I thought was funny. So. Uh, it's when they're in the premiere and they're watching the movie and uh, there's a scene where Denny runs in on them on the bed yes. and have like that weird pillow fight. Yeah. Uh, Jason Manzukis' character is there. And he, just, he just makes the comment. He's like, ooh, I don't like this. <laughs> Jason Manzukis is one of the funniest people alive. Oh, I agree 100%. Everything he is in, he is a- exceptional. He's so funny. Um He's one of my favorite people to watch. I'm always, anytime he comes on screen, I, I never know yeah. when he's going to be in something because he's yeah always like a small part, but I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this, this movie just went up 10 points in my head. So did you watch the league? Yeah. Okay. So he's, he, he plays a, a minor character in that. Ralphie. And Ralphie. Then whenever I, uh, it is Rafi. Rafi. Yeah. yeah. So there's one line that he says, and it's like early, like season two or season three. And it's to this day, it still stands out to me as just being like so gross. It's so funny. So he's, he's known in that show as just being a gross person Mm -hmm. in general. Right. And he's like real hairy, real has no boundaries. It's just gross. And like, he's, he's in one of the other characters, like bathrooms. And he talks about like, uh, using a, (laughs) Like a towel, I'm trying to remember a towel to wipe himself after going to the bathroom, uh-huh. and everyone's like dis- disgusted. He's like, "Yeah, he's like, it's like trying to get peanut butter out of a shag carpet." <laughs> oh, because he's talking about how hairy he is. That's that's what it was. It's like he's trying to get try to wipe peanut butter out of a shag carpet. It's not easy. <laughs> oh, that's gross. It is, but it's pretty funny. No, he's really funny. Um, he was, all- and he's. I think he's funny in real life too. Like, yeah. Uh, on uh, how did this get made he's on that podcast and he's the best part oh he's absolutely the best part and uh they all of them were in this movie because of the podcast which i think is is great yeah so they did they did a podcast on the room they talked about it made fun of it and all this stuff and uh because of that they were put into the movie i mean they're yeah Paul Shear, Jason Manzucas. It got them in touch with Greg Sestero, who they had on that episode of The Room. Mm. And they, you know, built a relationship around that. And it, it led to them getting roles in the movie, which is, I think, pretty funny. That was how I heard of The Room first, was through that podcast. Oh, yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about it. And then I even listened to that episode and didn't even think much about it. And then when you brought it up, I... I completely had forgotten about it and didn't realize that that was that same one that they were talking about. Mm. Yeah. I think I made you watch it. Didn't I? I told you to go watch it so we could talk about it. Yeah. Cause it was going to be one of the movies we talked about and I hadn't seen it yet. Well, we actually did two of them, two episodes on the room where I talked about it <laughs> and you said, uh, huh, uh-huh, that's right. Uh-huh. And then you went and talked about it. And then I just said, uh, huh, uh, huh. We weren't very good at Pretty much. planning podcasts back a couple months ago. Uh yeah, and we are only slightly just now. just a little bit, but it would have made a lot more sense if I would have just told you not on the podcast to go watch it instead of doing two episodes on it back to back. But you know, hey, you live in your you life. You know what? We 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 were trying something new. <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> but good news, this is basically the third episode on the room that we've had. So I know it's it is our most talked about movie. Probably, other than Wonder Woman and that stupid. Uh, oh jeez! No, what was that? Mo- no, what was that movie we talked about twice? <laughs> oh, uh, No Man's oh, Land is man. what I was about was- to say. Uh, what? What did we talk about twice? Oh, Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah. Oh gosh, 
We accidentally. That's how forgettable that movie is. We accidentally. Even the podcast on the movie is forgettable. <laughs> we accidentally started. I don't know if we ever released that. We accidentally started uh, a whole episode, and about ten minutes in, we're like, "Did we? Do we have like, this conversation? We had this exact conversation." Yeah, that was I bad. bet if we played both times we talked about it side by side, they'd be identical. Probably. Probably pretty close. But uh, anything else about the disaster artist? Um, no. I I mean that's uh that's about it. I actually, what was the name of the? I, I hate to call him the nerdy guy, but the nerdy guy. Um, Nathan Fielder. Is that what his name is in real life? I don't know. I thought he was a really good uh, casting for who they had from the room. The guy who falls over in the tux? Yeah. 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 Nathan Fielder is a comedian uh, and he has a show called okay. Nathan for You, which is the greatest show on TV. Oh, I've never heard of it. It, uh, so he goes, it that boob- it's like a, it's, I don't know. It's not a fake reality show, but it kind of is. It's like making fun of reality shows. You know, like, uh, what is that? Um, <sighs> Hell's Kitchen. What's that guy's name? Ramsey. Ramsey. When Gordon, Gordon Ramsey goes to restaurants and like helps fix them. Oh, like Kitchen Nightmares. Kitchen Nightmares. Uh, he does that for small businesses, but he gives them terrible advice, and uh, but he does it with a straight face, and so they'll do it. He he did. Uh, and these are real life businesses. Yeah, he had. The, they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, he had one huh. coffee shop turn into fake Starbucks. Oh, jeez. And uh, they just like... Why did they take his advice? Is he, Does he claim to be some renowned... Well, because it's on TV. Dude? Yeah. Wow. And What's it called? Nathan for you. I'm going to have to watch it's, that. It sounds funny. It is great. It's Yeah, it's, it, huh. it's one of my favorite shows. But uh, yeah. No, The Disaster Artist, pretty good. Uh there's not there's nothing about it that I hate. I just wasn't ready for it. You're just bummed. Yeah. And I like again, if I rewatched it, I would I probably enjoy it more cuz I would know what I'm watching. I to be honest, I I I kind of do remember going into it uh the same way as you thinking it was going to be just a straight up comedy. Yeah. And then it it, <clears throat> it being that at first, you know, for like the first half and then it kind of slowly transitioning to uh sad. And I was a little bummed out, but it, it wasn't so much that it didn't, you know, that it took away from the movie. Yeah. And then I feel like I watched it again today and knowing all that, I think it makes it more enjoyable. Well, it's definitely, it's a, it's a drama, right? Would you consider this a comedy? Uh, uh, yes. I don't know. If I, I don't know. It's tough. It's a good blend of drama and comedy, I guess. Yeah, I, the the comedy is it how ridiculous it is, but it being ridiculous is the sad part. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. But uh, yeah, so we will be back uh, in a couple of days with Molly's Game, which I have no idea yeah. what that even is or who's in it or what it's about. So this will be a new experience for me. You you said you've seen Don't it. even look... I have seen it. I just saw it a few days ago. Don't even look up anything about it. Don't look who's in it. Just watch it with a clean slate. Can I look who's in it when I watch the movie or do I have to keep my eyes closed the whole time? Uh, you are only allowed to listen to it. Okay. That's going to make it tough. And just imagine that it's Nicolas Cage Ooh. playing all the roles. All right. You'll have a new respect for Nicolas Cage. Can I imagine it's Nicolas Cage as Ghost Rider playing all the roles? Uh, each character you need to imagine as a different Nicolas Cage character. Gotcha. So Family Man and Next and the Wicker Man. Con Air, Wicker Man? Face Off. Ooh, yeah, Face the Off. Wicker Man. So when I when I think about Nicolas Cage and Face Off, do I and think then, of I, Nicolas Cage pretending to be John Travolta or John Travolta I pretending? I want you to imagine John Travolta, but it is Nicolas Cage. So when Nicolas Cage pretended to be John Travolta. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> And then, of course, I want you to imagine the main character is Nicolas Cage from the Left Behind movie. Oof. I never want to think about that again. 
<laughs> that is awful. All right. Well, we will be back with Molly's game in a couple of days. If you want to listen to that now, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash I seen that. For a dollar, you get access to all our episodes two weeks early. Then you can also help decide who has to pay the punishment at the end of the month. For a dollar, you can vote for Taylor or I. And whoever has the least amount of votes is the one who has to pay the punishment, which I have done so many times. Yeah, and it's been great. Actually, real quick, mm. I want to add one more thing to the disaster. Nope, sorry, that discussion is closed. Do you think Tommy Wiseau went to the premiere, and maybe not even necessarily the premiere, but the first time he went and saw the actual disaster artist, uh-huh. and he had that same feeling that he did at, in, at his own premiere where like, there's a scene in the movie and people laugh because it's funny, yeah. but he doesn't get why it's funny. He's like, what's funny? Like That really happened to me. I would imagine do you, do you he think that, he Do you think he understands? Mm-hmm. I think so. I think he gets it that it's a big joke. Huh. I I I don't know. I, I don't think like he likes it. Tough. But I think he gets it. I think he understands. And I mean he it's made him famous. It's made him exactly what he wanted, so I don't think he's that bitter right. about it. But I don't even mean necessarily like uh the the things that actually concern the room. I'm talking about like let's say his his opening scene, right, where he's performing at at the theater yep. and it's just like ridiculous and over the top like do you think if people laugh he he wonders why they're laughing or when he is doing his audition with the accent and you know just stuff like that like his his actual life stuff no i think he gets it now i would imagine i don't know <laughs> i don't know I, I mean i would hope so yeah but that'd be even sadder but uh yeah so anything else Zaster Artist? Nope, that's it. Follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Like us on Facebook, and we will be back with Molly's game.